It's time to talk about sex, but an honest talk about how our sex lives are changing as we age. Welcome to No Two Gays About It, the show for the over 50 gay male, hosted by two well over 50 gay men, and all about the things that are important to those gay men who are over 50. Hello, I'm Tom Burke. And I'm Michael Foley. And today we are going to talk about sex, the ups and the downs, literally, literally. as we gay men age. We'll be discussing how aging affects our sex lives, including health issues, medication, stress, and even the loss of a sex drive. We'll also discuss how we can deal with those changes, including the wonder drug, drug Viagra. And finally, we'll take a look at how we can find and bring intimacy into our lives when sex is not always on the table. So, Join us for this conversation as we take an honest and realistic look at what happens to our sex lives when we get older. Let's talk about sex. Sex for the aging gay guy. 50-year-old, 60-year-old, 70-year-old, 80-year-old. Michael, how the heck is aging affecting our sex lives? Oy vey. Um, it's, you know, it's ebbs and flows. Um, uh, with me, sometimes my sex drive is incredibly high and other times I honestly could care less. I am happy sitting on the couch eating a pizza. So, um, <laughs> you know, you take it, you take it when you could get it, right? That's definitely happening to all of us. You know, yes, we can still be like, oh, I want to go for it. And other times, as you said, it's like, no, nah, I'd rather just hang out and do nothing. But more than that, though. A lot of things that are happening to our bodies, ourselves, as we're aging, really does affect our sex lives. Um, one big thing is health problems. A lot of guys our age and older are having some health issues, which kind of deal with the whole sex act, you know? Absolutely. Um, especially a lot of guys who are having heart issues, a lot of those heart medications kind of shut down a lot a lot of our body parts right. um and you know maybe it's not forever maybe it's just a temporary thing but health issues do affect and we have to kind of just go with the flow and you know it's more important that we're dealing with our health than it is with our sexuality at that moment um but as I said, medications are a huge thing that affect not only the sex act, but our libido as well. I right. know a lot of guys who take um, uh, happy pills, you know, those psych drugs to make us not hate life so much. Oh, I know yeah, that the antidepressants absolutely do yeah. curb your sex drive. Yeah, which, you know, can be a big issue. Right. I. I have a really good friend who is married, has been in this committed relationship for a long time, and his husband, double whammy, is on some heart medication and on one of those psych drugs, and his husband is just like, yeah, I just don't care. I don't want to do this anymore. And so my friend's like, um, but yeah. I do. Yeah, you that's, know? That, that's, that's a tough situation. Um, we were out to dinner with a, another couple, and one of them just got out of the hospital had some major health issues and because i knew we were going to be talking about this i did ask them i was like how did it affect you know whatever and it was so sweet this one man said um you know there are times that i just have to step forward and be like his health his life is so much more important than getting off and i was like you know you're right um and you, you I, know what the biggest sex organ is, right? Uh, it, yes, uh, I know that's a, that's, a, <laughs> that's a loaded question. It's your brain, right. you know? So yeah. even, if, even if you can't function below the waist, um, there are things that people can do to sure. stimulate that portion of the brain and to encourage those endorphins to sort of rush through you um, without necessarily having an orgasm. Right. Um, and I think that's hugely important, especially for, you know, people like you who are in a long term committed relationship. 
I would imagine you have ebbs and flows to your sex life and have, you know, you've been together 35 years. Um, so how, do, how does that, how do you guys navigate those, those waters when it's ebbing and flowing and you guys may be in different spots at different times? Well, that's definitely it. As you know, my husband has had some health issues, which has affected our, you know, okay, we're not going to be jumping around like crazy young people for a while. You know, I've had to deal with that, but but not only those major health issues, but I'm I'm talking also as we're aging. You know, we might in our heads think that we are still you know those hot twenty eight year olds, but our bodies are telling us a completely different story. You know, and even there are times. Okay, I'm getting really personal here, but like I said, I want to have this honest and realistic talk. I mean, there are times when we're doing it, going at it. And I'm all of a sudden like, huh, it's not really going to happen tonight, is it? You know, there are those nights when um, I'm not just not going to get over that finish line. Um, but my husband understands that because there are nights that he can't get over that finish line, you know? And I'm like, okay. And so we help the other person finish the race, and then we go and eat pizza on the couch, you know? So... It's a win-win. It is a... Well, yeah. it's a win. Hey, anytime there's pizza, I don't care <laughs> yeah, what side exactly. you sit on, it's a win. Um, yeah, but I, I, it's, I, you know, and kudos to you, because again, you know, the, your biggest sex organ is your brain. Everything, right. everything below the waist is sort of... Every function that happens down there comes from what's going on between your ears. And yeah. the fact that you guys can sit back and go, hey, you know, can we do this tomorrow? Can we finish later? Whatever. It's not right. important that you care more about each other in the situation and take care of your emotional well-being as well as your physical. But yeah, I mean, just kind of accepting the fact that we're aging and this is going to happen every once in a while. So, OK, you know, um, and as you're saying, that that brain of ours, you know, dictates what's happening in our bodies as we're aging, besides taking medications, besides having health issues, besides just being old guys. Um, you know, there's a lot of stress in life and that affects, you know, our sex lives. I'm Absolutely. sure that happens with you too. You know, when you're like just dealing with life and you have some issues and problems and we're, n again, when we were 20, yeah, we had issues and problems, stress, who knew about stress? And you just the night away anyway. But when when you get to this age and you're like so stressed out, parts of your body are like, yeah, come back to me later. Because yeah. I, I, I got to deal with something else right now. So there are just so many things that affect our sex lives as we are aging, you know. Um, but I think we just have to be like upfront about it. You know? Totally. Um, it's, it's interesting because I broke my back when I was 17 and I had three knee surgeries by the time I was 24. So chronic pain has been a part of my life for a very long time. Right. And obviously, as I'm getting older, it's getting a little less tolerable in specific moments. And, um, you know, I'm capable of letting somebody know, because um, I do think it's important to communicate that my body is in a lot of pain right now and i'm not in a place where having a physical the physical act of sex is going to work for me um and you know i think that honesty creates a different level when you're um with somebody it has for me i know yeah um, that you know usually they are happy over the fact that i was able to share that with them and that opens the door for more conversation. And I think being honest about where we are physically is hugely important as we grow older. Because I am the Tin Man in the morning these days where it's like, yeah. oil can, <laughs> please, somebody. You know, there right. are mornings I get up out of bed and seriously have to go and sit on the couch for five minutes because I, my legs aren't there. It's, it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's a struggle some days. Right. And, um you know, I, I think we have to embrace that as we get older as well. Just going, this is what it is. It is where it is now. And in an hour from now, you know, once I start moving and get the oil can, I'll be a little bit better. 
Yeah. I mean, that's the thing that we just have to be just... I don't know, understanding with our bodies too, and not get all pissed off about it. Right. Um, one more thing I just want to talk about uh, with how aging changes our sex lives. And then, because I love what you were talking about, the importance of communicating, but let's get into that in a, in a bit. One thing that I did, because um, I was reading up, of course, I love research, I love reading stuff, and I was looking up about gay men and aging and sex and there's a, a number of articles I found about so many men, and I'm sure you know men like this, uh, so many men define themselves through the sex act, the gay men, that they are the sex act first. Um, and that's how this one uh, article I read was saying that. But that puts so much pressure on those men as they're aging and they start having these issues because it's like that their identity is being pulled away from them. Yeah, and what happens is there's this domino effect because it, all of a sudden your your mental state is being affected now. Right. Um, and I do know a lot of people who identify sexually. That's how they put themselves out. That's their their sexuality is tied to their masculinity, and. Yeah. Um, you're right. As we get older, we need to come to terms with that and allow that to be okay on days where it's just not happening. It's, 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 yeah. it's a cycle. It's, you know, and then, then there will be, you know, months and weeks where it's like you're a horny 17 year old again. So you have to be willing to take the ride as we get older and, and be comfortable wherever you're sitting, whether it's a day where it's like nothing's working or right. it's one of those glorious days where it's like you can't get enough just to be happy. And if you are truly one of those guys who identifies themselves as this sex act through this gay sex, um, they have to be really cognizant of this and start separating that, that uh, you know, them from the act, that they are so much more than that, you know, because as you're saying, you might have a couple good weeks and then all of a sudden, whoa. What just happened, you know? And, or and again, for that to be okay is is yeah. something we really, really, really have to give ourselves the compassion and grace that we deserve, right? When we're just not feeling it. The next section we want to tackle is how can we deal with these issues that are happening with us? These changes, uh, whether it be medication or stress or health issue or just life. Um, how can we deal with that? And as I said earlier, I loved the thing that you said about communicating is so incredibly important. Um, letting our partners know that, you know, I can't do that double backflip that I used to do because I'll be in traction for the next three and a half years. So, you know, whatever it is, yeah. like just communicate what it is, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and maybe I have a little bit of a leg up in regard to this because okay, I, I've been that... shut up. <laughs> Do you know that Just was one? That was that seriously. <laughs> wow, I don't usually yeah. open the door that way. But anyway, um, considering I've been dealing with this for so long in regard to the chronic pain, that right. I used to, I honestly used to experience an embarrassment and a shame um, in regard to not being in a place where I could have sex. Um, because of the pain. Yeah. And it took me a very long time to get to a place to be able to say to somebody, I can't right now because the pain is just, it's too intense, you know, um, right. especially when, you know, it was my I, L4, L5, S1, S2 for anybody out there who has back problems. Um, it's your lower back. So there's a lot of movement that's, you know, impeded sure. when you're having a really bad day. And again, it was just, it's such a weird thing as men that we experience so much through our sexuality. Yeah. Um, and just to find myself, to, it probably wasn't until my 30s um, where I was able to say, I'm not there today and it has to be okay. And if it's not, then, I, you know, we probably have nothing to pursue because this is just part of who I am. It's inherently who I am. Right. Um, okay. So, this 
also opened a door to something that I want to ask you about. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, sometimes when my husband and I are, you know, getting together and doing this and I realize or he realizes like, yeah, this isn't going to happen. We're not going to finish this just because whatever the body's telling us no. Because we're in this committed relationship, we're very understanding about each other and we're like, okay, cool. Do you want to do it later? Do you want to do it tomorrow? <laughs> Can I finish? You know, whatever. <laughs> um, but as you know, we had, we did a sh whole show on hookups, which you, you taught me a whole bunch of things about uh, the world out there and hooking up with somebody. But what if, you know, you're hooking up with guys our own age and you or one of them has one of those issues? Like, are you mortified or do you guys all understand? Um, you know, there, there are some people that do get embarrassed. And again, yeah. maybe because I've been dealing with, with it for so long, to me, it's not a big deal if someone can't function in a particular moment. That right. I'm like, that's okay. We cuddle. Oh, awesome. we, you know, they're, they're, I love making out. I could kiss for hours. That it doesn't necessarily have to go any further. It doesn't have to, there doesn't have to be a climax in order for me to feel sexually gratified. Right. And again, I guess maybe I was lucky because you know, for 40 some odd years, I've been dealing with this particular issue. And it's, it's interesting as I've gotten older to now hear people have a conversation with me about it. Um, and I think that's a key is to continue to communicate. If you're not in a place, don't get frustrated. Don't be embarrassed. Just know that it's in that moment, for whatever reason, you're not able to function, but there's a ton of other things you could do to create intimacy in the moment. Right. Right. Um, awesome. Cool. Ha have you ever experienced like some guy who's like, you know what, I'm on hard medication and I just can't get it up today or I'm not going to finish or, you know, um, it, I would I would hope that people out there are able to be upfront about everything. Um, I mean, sometimes I have to prod. And, yeah. and, and push a little bit because I could tell that they're getting frustrated. I could tell that they might be a little embarrassed. And I'm like, it's not a big deal. Right. It's, it's not. Life is not going to end on a particular day because you can't get it up or you're not able to function to the level that you would want to. It's not. Right. It's, life is not going to end. And we have to, as we get older, I think, untie that knot that our identity is based on yeah. sex. And the thing is that it's happening to everybody, whether they admit it or not. You know, everybody's going to have one of those days. Everyone's going to have one of those nights or whatever. So I would hope that everybody is so understanding, uh, you know, and just be like, hey, you know, like you, all right, that's okay, but let's do something else or whatever. And as you're saying, communicating is like a really important part of aging and sexuality that you're like yes to this no to this i might need some help here or you know what i mean um A absolutely and i think it's important yeah. for us single guys to remember if it's us in the situation and we're not able to function in a way we want to is to give somebody else the opportunity and a moment to be compassionate toward us and say to us i get it I totally understand yeah. it because it happens to me. And I think right. that's the major wall that needs to be broken down first right. and foremost is the ability to allow yourself to have the conversation. Right. I think, you know, obviously it starts having that conversation with yourself and just being like, you know what? I'm not the only one that this happens to. I have to just be like, yeah, this is going to happen and I'm okay with this so that you're able to talk to the next person about that as well. It, it's a lot easier for me in my world because we get each other, we understand, we have the leeway, but I think I would be one of those people that might be feel a little mortified, like, oh, I can't be perfect today, ah, uh, you know, which is unfortunate. Yeah, because I think for a lot of us, a lot of us, you know, gay men especially, that it um, it undermines our masculinity in a way, if we're not able to function, and yeah. nothing could be further from the truth. Right. That it just, just because you're not able to function on a given day doesn't chip away at your masculinity or your sense of self. It shouldn't right. anyway. It does with a lot of people, but 
you know, as we get older, hopefully we learn other ways of operating in the world that doesn't have to do with the stuff that's below our waist. Hopefully. I mean, yeah, we all still, like, sexuality is an important thing until we're dead. You know, like, it, it is an important part of who we are. Uh, the sex act is an important part of who we are, but it's not all of who we are. Um, you know, that's what we have to kind of separate from. Um, okay, I have a question, too, though, about... I mentioned earlier the wonder drug Viagra. Um, I am sure that that has completely changed things out there as well. But, you know, as I said uh, about myself and my husband, like some nights I just can't get to the finish line. I can get it up, but I just can't finish there. Um, so Viagra is not going to help you there. But no. have you had any experience with any of these drugs? Um, I, it was probably in the early 2000s, I think, when the drug first came out. Yeah. And a friend of mine had it, and he was doing it recre recreationally, not because he needed it, because he was in his 30s. Right, um, yeah. And I was like, eh, what the hell, I'll try it. Um, yeah. I hated it. Oh, my God, me too. Oh, my God, because seriously, <laughs> you know that commercial that says if you have an erection lasting more For than six hours? hours? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, it would not, yeah. it was horrible. And my, I uh, got a headache, my face yes. was flushed yeah and i'm exactly. like oh hell no i don't need help in I, at, at that point um i right. was like i don't need help anyway so i don't ever need to do that again and fortunately i don't still i mean at some yeah. point i'm i i might have to reconsider it but i did not like <laughs> what, well, what went on I, in my body when i took it that's so funny because i had the exact same thing oh. and i too like the moment it came out scott my husband was able to get us some, and I was like, I want to try this, you know? And I too was like still in my thirties. Yep. I didn't need it at all. And, but I took it. It was so painful, yes. oh you know, God. like so painful. It was like, so, I don't know, tight. Engorged. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. and, wow. and then, like you said, the headache and just a little too TMI, I'm very blessed down there. So there was a lot of my blood was somewhere that, so I was like dizzy and I was feeling sick and I pacing back and forth. When is that four hours up or whatever it was? Like, I just wanted it to be over, but it stuck in my body for a long time. You know, days, it'd be like all of a sudden, you know, ba boing. <laughs> oh, it's still in my system. Okay. Yeah. But I just remember the pain being so dizzy and the headaches hopefully it has changed you know hopefully they've because that was also the very yeah that was beginning. when it was like really pure and really strong yeah. i'm assuming that they've toned it down a little bit i would yeah, hope I, anyway because that was intense and I, was. I remember where i was i was in kenny bunkport maine well, there you go <laughs> and it was like four o'clock in the morning and i'm still like what the fuck? <laughs> i know right oh my god so crazy oh my god but it is a wonder drug. It is great for those men who do have issues um, so that they can, you know, continue having sex. So it's a great thing. And there are so many different types of that right now. Um, you know, there's Cialis and uh, God only knows what else. Yeah. But um, so I, I do hope that it has changed a bit. Uh, but the thing is, like you said, when I get to that point and I need it, I'm going to use it. Why not? You know, if it, if it does help us, um, although I hope, God, I hope it doesn't hurt as much as it did. You know, I, they had to have changed that formula because again, I hope so. this was when it first came out and it was yeah. like, yeah. Uh, do you remember there was a anti-inflammatory, um, cell, was it Celebrex? Yeah. That they actually took off the market because it was too strong and people were having heart issues because that's what they put oh. me on in the late nineties. And fortunately wow. it didn't, didn't affect my heart. But it was a miracle drug and they took it off the market and revamped it and toned it down. So I'm assuming they probably figured out a more reasonable yeah, balance with the, the erectile so. dysfunction drugs. Right. Hey, um, if you guys out there want to let us know, please do, because we're curious. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, it's so great that it's it's out there and that people can have access yeah. to it. And um, 
just great. But it doesn't help with the sex drive. And I know that that's something that wanes as one ages. It's, as you said, one week you're going crazy, the next week you're like, ah, I could care less. Um, you don't know of any drug that kind of gets the libido going, do you? Um, no, again, because I think a lot of that is between the ears. Yeah. Because I know I've gone through periods in my life where I was in a state of depression and right. there was no way anything was going to work. And it was because of what was going on between my ears. Yeah. Um, sometimes it was a, a welcomed escape for me, but then there were other times where it was like, I just can't even think about it. Um, yeah. So again, your biggest sex organ is your brain. We have to remember that. So yeah. a lot of what, and I think, you know, that may be a part of a lot of people's issue is that, because I know it was for me, if I'm not able to function, I got to sort of look at what's going on in my head at, the, at that particular moment. And I right. think allowing myself that space to be in a shitty place and not being sexual is okay now. Yeah. I, I know that I can... You know, if I'm like so horned up and I'm like, okay, ah, and I see my husband's face, I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's not happening. We're, we're not going anywhere, <laughs> are we? <laughs> Which I guess, you know, for the straight guy, you, you know, you do it whenever you want, whenever you feel it. But with, if you're in this committed relationship, it's not all about you. So it's like, I really, really wanted to play today. And like, oh. Well, but, you know, so, so I get you see that, right? You see it happening. Do you guys yeah. have a way of sort of accommodating the other person in those moments? Or is it just, yeah, we'll do it tomorrow? Well, no. I mean, it really depends on, uh, like, if I look at him and I see he is so stressed out about work or some there's some big issue, I'm like, yeah, we're... It's not even worth yeah. doing that. But like I was saying, if we are in the the process of it and he's like, you know what? Not going to happen today. He definitely will be there for me to, he's like, okay, but you can be like, no. And, I, and I'm and i always like, no, it's okay. I'll wait. Yes, do me. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I, I want, no. It's, so how is, how is your headspace when you're in the, in the place do you get down on yourself if you're in the place where it's not happening, but he really wants to go there? Do you get down on yourself? Are you harder on yourself? Or do you find it easier not to be because you're in a committed relationship and yeah. you know each other so well? It's that. And, you know, we've talked a lot about the, being in this committed relationship. We all, you know, you know when to step forward, you know when to step back. You know when it's about you, you know when it's not about you. And we... Uh, kind of are there for each other and it's like if it's not working for me we let's make it work for you if you know we're into it or whatever and then there are times that we're like you know what it's okay we'll wait till we're both going for this or whatever um uh, so uh, for me this whole being in a committed relationship thing works and the whole sexual thing works but it's not always about me so and i'm sure it's a dance that you had to learn with totally. both of you but, you know, that that's a really great thing uh, you brought up. Uh, we got together. I was in my 20s. You know, he was 30-something. We grew up together. We started out being those crazy maniacs doing it, you know, three times a day, every day for... And I think back on that, I'm like, what? no wonder I was so thin. But, you know, <laughs> we aged together. Right. So, you know, the aging process and the slowing down of the libido or the slowing down of whatever, uh, or life taking over, you know, we became more successful in our lives and had more things to worry about. So that's great. But I think if you come together later in life, you haven't had that growth together. So you have to do the dance. You have to learn the dance where we created our own dance, if that makes any sense, you know. Yeah, you guys um, got to learn the dance together Yeah, in exactly. your time, as opposed to, you know, folks like me who are older and we're just getting together with somebody, we have to learn right. that dance now with bad knees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? So it makes, right. it makes maneuvering around the floor a little, a little more challenging. But if we go back to the most important thing we talked about, this communication thing, it's like, yeah, I got bad knees. Ah, good, because I got a bad elbow and a bad back. Right. You know, like, okay, 
Um, so you still get that really great excitement, but in a realistic way of being the older guy. I think that's smart and important to communicate, right? Yeah, and allowing ourselves yeah. as single gay men who sometimes struggle physically to live in its, our own head, a state of grace, and for that to be okay and not to be right. so hard on ourselves. Oh, totally. Yeah. But then also allows us to give grace to others. Absolutely. To understand right. that, yeah, you might have a lot of shit going on in your life. You might have some issues. You might be on medications. You might, whatever. I'm giving you grace. If you give me grace, let's go. Awesome. For some people, sex really is off the table or is off the table often, you know? And so I think it's important to figure out how can we, as we're aging, as our sex lives are getting slower and less often or whatever, how can we find or bring that intimacy into our lives, because that is an incredibly important thing. And something you said to me, again, back to our show on hookups, you were saying that a lot of the reasons why guys are out there hooking up is to have those moments of intimacy, to to have that kind of feeling between two people. So if you take the sex act out of that, how can we bring in that intimacy into our lives? Oh, that's a big one. I know, right? I again I think it has to it starts with us and allowing for our inability to be physically sexual for it to be okay and not to experience a sense of shame or embarrassment or feeling less than because this particular aspect of your life isn't operating the way you would want it to. Right. And then hopefully if you're starting to date somebody, because um, this happened to me very recently out here, where someone had prostate surgery and they weren't able to function. Yeah. And he had the conversation with me. And I can't tell you how good that made me feel that he was willing to share that with me. And in that moment, it didn't matter. Sure. You know, we sat on the couch on the, our first date and just like snuggled, watched TV, held hands, made out, and sex wasn't on the table. And then after a couple more dates, you know, it, we, we found other ways to do things. And Fantastic. I felt incredibly honored that he shared that with me so early, because um, a lot of people wouldn't. Because again, there's right. an embarrassment for some strange reason. Um, uh, that comes along with things like that. And uh, so I urge you guys out there to to be willing to share because there are people out there who will accept that and be okay with it if you're yourself and you live in yourself and you're a, you know, a great person that I think you'll find somebody who will more than likely be willing to take the journey with you. But yeah, which is brilliant and lovely, but all guys out there should be accepting and open to this because we're all gonna hit some of these blocks along the way yeah. you know so we should as you said give grace and and receive grace back um i we have another couple friends the one of the guys had open heart surgery and um he too i i asked questions about their sex life because we're doing this show and he said something that was lovely lovely to me he said um you know, I I just liked lying with my head on his chest, yeah. listening to his heart beating. That was so much more than the like hottest sex thing that I could have done when I was 20. That was such an intimate moment. And knowing that he made it through this heart uh, surgery and his heart was still beating and, and for his partner to just feel that intimacy by having his ear on his chest. I thought that was such a lovely thing, yeah. you know? So I think we all have to kind of change the way we're thinking about sexuality, change yeah. the way we're thinking about the sex act. You just um, hit on a huge issue. And that is for um, 
us to learn how to bring intimacy back into our sex life, even if it's a one night stand. Yeah. To, to bring that intimacy back into it because it it has a huge impact on on how we perform, how we feel about ourselves, and that's that's a, right. That's a beautiful thing. That's still one of my favorite things to do. Honestly, is to lay with somebody with my head on their chest to hear their heart beating. Yeah, that's been a that's been a thing of mine. I guess for, for, God since I was a teenager for some strange reason. Because there's a closeness that you have, right? That uh, transcends anything else. As corny sure. and as queer as that sounds, um, to me, that's a huge part of my sexuality. Um, okay, so when you are with somebody, do you say that? Like, I would love to just lay with my head on your chest. I just do it. <laughs> okay, I do. I just, you know, okay. if if we're done, and I love putting my head on somebody's chest. And there are, there are times I'll say, oh my God, I love that sound. And they know exactly what I'm talking about. Right. Which is great. And again, though, the importance of communicating, be like, you know what? Eh, no, it's not going to happen tonight, but I just would love to lay here with my heart, yeah. head on your chest. Like, that is so romantic and sweet and, you know, so much better than that, like, wham, bam, I came and I left, you know? you're missing out on all that beautiful stuff, which is cool. What's another way that you can kind of bring in intimacy into your life if sex is not so much on the table? I, PDAs. I'm huge on PDAs. Oh, Michael, I am so not. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, I, but I am. Just like sort of, you know, being in a restaurant, holding hands across the table, that to me is as much part of my sexual being as anything else I do. If actually for me, it's probably a, a bit more because I feel so much more connected to the person Yeah, to be able to hold their hands or cuddling in a movie theater that it's, it's not about the actual act of sex, but we're being, we're being sexual in, in this very different way. And so I think it's just learning to discover other ways to express affection or express that you are really hot for this person and just want to be close to them. Oh my God, I I I love that feeling so much. Cool. And I, I'm I I I'm gonna keep pushing you. I want to see you boys walking, holding hands. And I I want to see PDAs I'm throwing the it's gauntlet just, down for you. <laughs> it's just not my thing. Um, you know. I get it, but uh, whatever. Uh, you know. So I do want to ask you something. We we have some of the most amazing guys who are watching and listening our shows, and they write into us all the time. And there are a number of guys who've been writ who have written in who have said that they've just given up. Yeah, that they're just done with it. They're done with dating. They're done with trying to find relationships. They're done with sex. They're just closing up shop. <sighs> Yeah. That is a little sad to me. Um, um, and I understand there's so many reasons why they yeah. are. But if it's any of these things that we've talked about, like, you know, I'm I'm not going to go out and date because I'm on meds and I don't feel like it, or I have a health issue and I can't whatever, you know, I think it comes down to that thing that you say is so important. It's that communicating, you know? Yeah. I, I respect their decision because sure. it is theirs um, sure but i would hope that at some point some folks might rethink it um and hopefully open up to more conversations with other people about what they're experiencing because it might make you feel less alone which sometimes is why we isolate and right. just throw our hands up and say i'm done um because it is such a huge part of who we are and our experience while we're here. And we need that, especially if we are going through something difficult, whether it be a health issue or stress, something in our lives, to have that moment where, like you were saying, to just sit on the couch with somebody and hold right. their hand and watch a movie and, and say, like, God, I'm having such a hard time, and be there for them. You know, that's, that's an important important thing for everybody and yeah. i hope people are hearing you say um how important these things are to you and how important it is to give grace to other people um you and know, ourselves I, 
I think if I was a single guy and I was having some sort of sex, you know, issue that I couldn't get it up, couldn't finish, had an issue, whatever it was, I would feel horrible and I would not put myself out there because I don't want to be judged by other people. Right. But to hear you saying, yeah, we're all going through this. We all have those days and it's okay. And that, and I just hope that all the guys out there are like, yeah, you know, we're all going through this. <laughs> like we have all had those days and we all can just support each other and, and just be so understanding. Um, I hope that's happening out there. And I hope that they hear that in your stories, um, you know, because you are one of the guys that's out there. Uh, yeah, I think we, so you, we just have to be willing to open up and share and be vulnerable. And if someone doesn't want to hear it, that shouldn't be a reflection on us. It's just that's somebody who isn't in a place to receive it. That shouldn't, nobody, I think, in, in, in the course of a lifetime has thrown their hands up as much as me and just went, fuck this, I'm done. I don't want to deal with guys anymore. This sucks. It just is what it is. But then after I sit in my little mud puddle for a while and feel sorry for myself, <laughs> um, I eventually get up, take a shower and go, no, having intimacy and contact with another human being is more important to me that I don't ever want to shut that off in myself. And it's a hard feeling to resist. I get it. I get it so hard. It's not even funny. Um, but, you know, then I, I realize I'm the one who's losing out when I do that. Oh, good. Thanks for sharing that. Hope those guys hear you. Uh, and I think that's a great place for us to end our kind of realistic and honest discussion on sex. Um, yeah. Yeah. Communicate. Be Please, open. Just, yeah. Give grace to others. So give yourself grace. Be okay if you're having issues. Get rid I of the shame. That, Get rid of the yeah. embarrassment. Talk you're to other people. You're not the only one. Yep. We're all so in the many same people are boat. going through the same thing. It's so true. And, you know, we might not be going through it today, but we might be tomorrow. Absolutely. And we might be in five years from now, and we can learn from you how to get through this. We love making this show and we would not be where we are without your support. Consider becoming a member of our Patreon today. For as little as the cost of one cup of coffee a month, your membership fees go directly to keeping the show on air, as well as earning you exclusive access to bonus content and early access to episodes. And that's just our way of saying thank you. Head on over to patreon.com forward slash no two gays about it and join our found family now. Yes, please click the link in the episode description below and become a Patreon member today. So Michael, this has been fantastic. Thank you for sharing your stories and opening up. And again, I think the most important things that we can say about our sex lives and aging and how no matter what, there are going to be changes just to, first of all, give ourselves grace and be like, yeah, this is happening and it's okay. And if it's happening to someone we're with, to give them grace. And then to communicate to each other and be like, okay, maybe we can't do what we would love to do if we were 20, but what can we do? What can I do for you? And I think you'll be surprised at how many people are willing to accommodate you as equally as you would be willing to accommodate somebody else. Hopefully. Hopefully that's the case. Yeah. Everyone just be kind to everybody else. And we're all in this big boat together. Uh, so all of you guys out there, please leave us a comment and tell us about your thoughts on sex and aging and what kind of obstacles are you hitting? What are you finding out there? We want to know it all. So please let us know. Um, and as Michael said earlier, please click like and subscribe so that we know that this is the kind of content that you're looking for. And for those of you that are listening to our podcast, wherever it is you're listening to, give us an amazing review. Give us those five stars, because not only does that boost our own show, but it also gets our show out there to more and more of those gay guys over 50 so that they, too, can join our conversation. So big thanks in advance for doing that for us. Yeah, thank you. And you guys can reach us on social media at the moniker No Two Gays About It, and that's the number two, and that is across social media, including YouTube. Um, and you could also hit us up at uh, gmail.com, no two gays about it at gmail.com. 
We want to hear from you. Awesome. We also want to thank um, two of our uh, sponsors over at Patreon who are at the executive producer role, and that is Ted Zalewski and Cesar Montero. Thank you so much for your support, guys, and your belief in us. We appreciate it greatly. We totally do. Thank you so much. Well, okay, that's it for this week. That's it for our sex talk today. Uh, So for all of you guys out there, whether you are over 50, over 60, over 70, over 80, hopefully over 90, hopefully you're still enjoying a very um, full and exciting sex life, whatever that may be, give yourself the grace give yourself the understanding and give that to the other guys as well so until next time michael until next time tom hey guys thank you for listening see ya bye